my name is Grizel and welcome to my first ever YouTube video. I'm so excited to start a YouTube channel to answer questions about backpacking, life, yeah, build that relationship between viewer and storyteller. Today we're going to be talking about how to through hike with a dog. <laughs> the Appalachian Trail there was just no information on how to do a long hike with the dogs but before we get started I wanted to just let you know a few things in the middle of this video you will see that I have a complete outfit change and that's because I already recorded this video but unfortunately it got lost so I'm doing the second half of this video in this outfit I am living on the road right now so that's why things are kind of chaotic but yeah you know what it's all about adjusting and we're gonna make it through how this is gonna work I'm going to answer some of the questions I asked myself before I went on the through hike and then I got a shit ton of questions from you all asking really specific details on how I did the first half of the AT with my dog Rue and so we're going to go over that so I'm excited to do it so let's get started. Okay so the first question that you should ask, are you ready to hike your dog's hike? Now in the through hiking world you hear all the time hike your own hike, which means basically you need to be able to listen to your body at all times. But when you're hiking with a dog, it's a little bit different. You're hiking with a child on trail, so their needs trump your needs. So you have to be able to always listen to your dog, be able to communicate really well with your dog, make sure your dog is trained because it's a rough world out there just alone, but taking a child or a dog, it can be pretty <laughs> intense when it comes to time. Personally, I don't like doing long distance hikes longer than four months. So, but with a dog, you have to be able to make that longer or shorter depending on your dog's needs. Everything is about your dog. That is the most important question that you have to answer. Are you ready to hike your dog's hike? Second question I had to ask was, what is my dog's energy level? Rue was super energetic when before trail. I mean, she would fall asleep standing um, and just pace all of the time. Her energy level was super high. If you have a couch potato dog, I don't know, maybe think about whether or not you're doing this more for yourself or you're doing this for your dog. Rue can be outside and hunting and watching the woods forever, which is a huge reason why I personally took Rue on this hike. I knew she'd be happier. I knew that she was ready for this adventure. Another question I would ask is, does your dog like people and does your dog like other dogs? You are going to encounter so many people, especially on the Appalachian Trail. Just get ready to see at least five to ten people a day, especially as a northbounder. My dog, she doesn't like big backpacks, I learned, um, and so we had to adjust accordingly. So you're constantly being adaptable to your dog's needs. Again, hike your dog's hike. And we're going to go a little bit further on what that means after answering some of the questions you guys have asked me, which are super in-depth. So stay with me. This is probably going to be a really long video, but there's no information out there, so this is what I gathered from 1100 miles on the Appalachian Trail with my pup, Roo. How big should your dog be? I have seen a 15 to pound dog hike really, really long sections. Um, I've seen 25 pound dogs hike really long sections. I've seen 80 pound dogs hike really long sections. I don't know if size ne necessarily matters. Again, it goes with energy level. If your dog loves hiking, through hiking can be anywhere from eight to 12 hour days, depending on how many miles you wanna do. Is your dog ready for a really long days? Slash, does your dog enjoy really long days? Rue thrives in a full activity day. On or off leash? I am a big proponent that your dog should be trained both on and off leash. Reasons why it should be on leash. You're gonna be passing by a lot of people and when you're passing by people or they wanna pass you, your dog should be on leash at all times. A lot of people are really scared of dogs and it's important to be mindful, especially since a lot of people are out there kind of doing their own kind of recovery healing. So to be mindful of other people, make sure your dog is um, on leash trained. It is also really important for your dog to be trained off leash. Off leash training means I let her go about 20 feet ahead of me and she would always come back. So there are some really sketchy sections where I had to trust Rue that she wasn't going to be running away um, because we would be climbing down this huge rock and if she had been connected to me, we both could have gotten really injured. She could have pulled me down a rock 
face, something like that, or really big boulder sections. I'm really glad that she stayed with me. Dogs that kind of like go everywhere, I can see that being problematic. Not impossible, but problematic. That being said, there's also sections of the Appalachian Trail as well as the PCT where there is an on-leash law. So make sure that you do some reading before you go into some national parks. Usually there's a sign somewhere that says dogs must be on leash. Obey them because you will get fined. Training, 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 training. I worked on Roos training before the Appalachian Trail for probably three to four months, um, really, really seriously. What that meant was I did a lot of walking with treats everywhere in my pocket, making sure she doesn't pull me, how to make sure she doesn't um, pull on the sidewalk, how to for her to stay behind me, which is the heel, um, and then how to make sure she leaves it. If she sees a squirrel, I don't want her to be pulling me either, so making sure you're just kind of constantly aware of stuff. It takes a while. Make sure that they know how to stay behind you as much as possible. People will get on to you about that. Um, apparently, a lot of people have opinions on how you should train your dog. I'm not saying to listen to that, but train your dog as much as you can if you do decide to take your dog on trail. How do you handle people and how do you handle dogs on the trail? <sighs> this one was really hard for me because Rue got very protective of me on trail. She started getting more suspicious of people with really big backpacks so she started doing a lot more barking which scared a lot of people which is a really hard part of my story on the Appalachian Trail. If you don't have a dog like that awesome glad that you have a dog that's super chill my dog is not super chill um she's very high energy she's never bitten anyone that being said i trained rue how to do leave it very well she would sit next to me when other people would pass us um, and i would always have treats in my pack at all times to make sure she wouldn't she wouldn't charge not that she would do anything but just barking at people we did a lot of leave it leave it leave it um because a lot of people i cannot stress this enough a lot of people are scared of dogs, especially on trail. I can't tell you how many stories of people telling me that they got bit by a dog on a trail, and I don't want to be a part of that story, so making sure that you're mindful of people because people take priority over dogs. <laughs> um, so yes, train your dog. And then when it comes to dogs, seeing other dogs on trail, always, always, always introduce dogs on leash. It's really important, um, especially out in the wild. Always ask the owner if your dog is dog friendly. Um, it's just a mindfulness. It's of other people's needs and their dog's needs. You just never know if there is a dog that's super aggressive. Rue loves other dogs, but that doesn't mean the other dog loves other dogs. So just be mindful of other people's animals. Are there places for dogs to stay on trail? I can only speak about the first 1100 miles on the AT from Georgia to Virginia. I didn't have too many problems finding a place to stay. There's usually motels or hotels that host dogs, but make sure you do your research. I planned almost every single stopping point for the first 1000 miles um, just because I wanted to make sure there were places for Rue to stay. Um, I'll link all the places that I stayed on the Appalachian Trail that were dog friendly. There are also other places that I would have to walk extra miles and camp in the woods because there is no dogs allowed. But for the most part, everyone was pretty dog friendly. Do your research and I'll attach that below, make it easier for all of you. How do you determine how much distance your dog can do? This is where reading your dog signs is so, so important. Knowing when your dog is tired. It sounds really simple, but a lot of people push their dogs a little bit too far. And some people are super scared and don't push their dogs a little bit more than they can. We started out the trail averaging anywhere from 7 to 11 miles a day and for about a week and a half. And then we added like a mile and then did that for a while. And we just slowly kept going up and up. And then we ended up averaging around 20 miles a day and taking either a zero, which means zero miles, um, or a Nero, which is nearly zero miles every four to five days. And sometimes I would also drop Rue off at a hotel, get some miles done, and then hitch back to the hotel if I really, if I wanted to get some miles in and I didn't want her to. If I felt like I was really good and I wanted to hike, I didn't push Rue. I made sure that she had a place to stay at a hotel. I would get my miles in. I'd come back. It probably cost a little bit more money that way, but it was always worth it to me because I felt good and I wanted to feel good about my body, but she wasn't and she needed a rest day. So again, 
her needs above mine. Sometimes you can eat halfway. That's what I try to do as much as I can. Did you cut your own supplies to make room for a roux? Yes, I definitely, definitely did. Last year, I completed the Pacific Crest Trail, which was awesome. However, my pack was a little bit too heavy and I ended up getting a pretty severe hip injury due to a heavy pack. So knowing I was gonna do the AT, I already knew I had to cut back on a lot of the weight and bringing Rue's stuff was gonna add weight for me. So I definitely cut back. I did that in a few unique ways, buying a little bit more expensive gear. I highly recommend minimizing your pack needs um, as much as you can if you, do, if you are bringing a dog. Of course, I'm not saying be an ultra lighter. I'm just saying a lighter pack is gonna help you the long run. There were a few days when Rue, I could tell, was not feeling that great. It was really hot. There wasn't that much water. I would decided to take her pack onto mine, which is an extra, t like at the end there, an extra eight or nine pounds I would put on my pack. If I had had a heavier pack, that would have been a miserable hike. But since my pack was pretty light already, adding her pack, uh, it was still miserable, but it wasn't as bad. And that avoids injuries and not having an injury is going to ensure finishing at least the trail. How did I feed Rue? This is a great question and this is my own technique. I didn't find this anywhere. I thought about doing a collapsible bowl, but it was just really inconvenient. So the through hiker bag, I put these everywhere. I always carried so many. I would just open it up. I put the food in here and let her eat out of that. Um, and this is how I put her water as well. If there was holes, I'd just get new ones. This is a way to cut back on weight instead of bringing in a collapsible bowl. I know it is ounces and it's not that big of a deal, but when you have to carry musher wax, when you have to carry extra medicine in case anything happens, when you have to carry wraps for her foot, when you have to carry all these little things that you don't think about, this is gonna help you a lot. Um, very lightweight, obviously. How much did I feed my dog? I fed Rue, obviously, breakfast and dinner. It started out with the normal amount of food. I fed her three-fourths a cup for breakfast and dinner. And then as she started getting more mileage, a cup for breakfast and dinner. I also fed her every time I ate. So when I was eating a snack, I gave Rue a snack. Sometimes I gave her tuna. Sometimes I gave her just a spoon of peanut butter. Sometimes I gave her some of my Cheetos. Sometimes I gave her some chicken jerky. It's just feeding her because she's burning a lot of calories just like you're burning a lot of calories. Food is energy. The brand I used for her food was called Puppo. Um, it's a kibble. It's dry food. A lot of people do dehydrated food. It just seemed like a lot of work for me and a lot of money that I wasn't willing to pay so I definitely carried the extra weight. If I had to do it again I don't know if I would get dehydrated food because it was Dehydrated food is really expensive, um, but she did great on her food. She didn't lose any weight. She got very muscular, um, but Rue didn't lose any weight on trail, which I'm very proud of. Where does your dog sleep? Rue slept in my quilt right next to me on my arm <laughs> every single night. Um, I thought about getting her a little sleeping bag. We had some pretty cold nights, so I actually wasn't too upset that we got to share a sleeping bag. We kept each other warm all night. thought about getting her her own sleeping quilt or bag but again I was really really cautious about how much weight I was carrying and I'm a cuddle bug and she's a cuddle bug slash I force her to cuddle with me and on those cold nights she wanted to be right here anyway my sleeping pad was a Thermarest Z light sleeping foam pad I think that that is the wisest thing to do it's already hard when you're doing a blow-up mattress um, to get holes just from rocks, but having a dog on a sleeping pad is probably the worst idea ever because your dog will probably pop it. How to protect your dog's paws. So there's this stuff called musher wax, and thank God for that stuff. It's basically a hydrating oil lotion for their paws. I ended up using it once one to five times a day depending on how her paws are doing for the first half from georgia to virginia the trail was pretty maintained i definitely would suggest doing those little booties um from northern virginia on just because it gets so freaking rocky um even to a point where it's hurting me i can't imagine if rue had been with me how difficult that would have been did you bury your dog's poop i gotta be honest i didn't pick up every single poop that rue did According to the ATC, the Appalachian Trail Conservatory, 
you are able to dig a six inch cat hole for your own poo poos and also obviously your dogs. So if Rue ever like pooped pretty close, I would do that. And I carried a little um, deuce of spades. But a lot of times, honestly, Rue would poop so far away and there's so much moisture in the air that I didn't pick it up. If I had to do it again, I probably would have picked it up, but honestly, I got pretty lazy about it, and that's not something I'm proud of, but I wanted to stay honest. Also, she never pooped near a water source. She's really smart about where she went to the bathroom, and she always went pretty far off trail. All that being said, just be mindful. Try to abide by the leave no trace. Snakes! Animals! Bears! Oh my! Help. I was never really super stressed about animals. Rue loves to chase squirrels um, so we worked a lot on um, leave it and making sure she was obedient and watching me at all times when it came to snakes um, that was something I actually was a little bit nervous about but if your dog is behind you you should see the snake before um, there were a few times I almost stepped on a snake but I would much rather step on it than Rue when it came to bears I felt safer with Rue with me when we would camp Rue would usually growl if she heard anything out in the woods, which usually scares bears off. Um, I know a lot of people worry about dog food because apparently dog food is something that bears smell from a lot longer away. I slept with my food every night. I never worried about it. Bears are usually more scared of you than they than the other way around. <laughs> I wasn't really stressed about it. Did you hang your dog's food? No. <laughs> I don't even hang my food, so I didn't hang Rue's food either. I don't know if it's just the through hiker world, if you talk to anybody who's had any experience on any of the trails, most of them did not hang their food bag. A lot of people on the AT do hang their food bag, um, especially in shelters, which if I ever was in a shelter, I always hung my food bag just to be mindful of other people, and there's a lot of mice, but if I was ever stealth camping, I never hung my food bag because I was never really worried about bears or mice when I was in the middle of the woods. Did you camp in shelters? Not with Rue. Again, people are really scared of dogs. A lot of people are on these trails to do some healing and I don't want to interrupt that process. So I just stayed away from shelters entirely when I had Rue with me. Also, I know that if there's anything in the woods, Rue will bark. You don't want to wake any other people up. So a lot of people have very strong opinions on dogs being in shelters. Technically, there are no rules about dogs being in shelters. They're more than welcome. But again, it's just a mindfulness thing. Um, I would stay away from it personally. What gear did he use? Her pack was the Ground Bird gear pack. It was the best pack ever. She had, it fit her perfectly. It's custom made. You send the, the Ground Bird um, all your, the, your dog's dimensions. I cannot stress enough how amazing this pack was. It was really easy to, if she wanted a quick break, like something five minutes, I didn't have to take her whole entire pack off. I just had to take the top part off with where her food was at. Way better than all the rough wear, um, just because I tried rough wear and she got calluses and blisters underneath her armpits. They also have really cool colors. When it comes to other stuff, I did get her little booties that we never used because we we're never in a super rocky section, but if, again, if you're up in Pennsylvania with your dog, I definitely would recommend booties. I carried musher wax. I carried a lot of Ziploc bags. I carried her food. I carried a lot of snacks for her. I get there's um, Turbo Pups little bar, which are like energy bars for dogs. A leash. Carried a bandana for her. So if it was super hot, I would put the bandana in some river water and put it around her neck to get her feeling a little bit cooler. Some bandages if anything happened to her. So that's all the gear I had for her just because I wanted to make sure that we were both minimal and there's literally nothing I would have brought extra. You don't need as much as you think you do. Worst case scenario, you get off trail. I had to get off trail with her pretty suddenly because she was feeling really fatigued and it took me about 15 minutes to find a, to find a road and hitch out. Do you filter your dog's water? At first, I did filter Rue's water, but I realized that this was going to take a lot more time. It was very time consuming to do both of our waters. So I ended up switching to only letting her drink of waters that I would drink out of. So very steady flow, making sure none of the water was stagnant, stuff like that. And she never got sick. She was always very fine. How do you deal with national parks that 
dogs are not allowed to go to. I know a lot of people try to get their dog to become a therapy dog, but Rue is definitely not a therapy dog. She's my therapy dog, but she's definitely not trained to be a therapy dog. I know a lot of people try to get the document that says their dog is a therapy dog, but I just had my partner come up and watch her for the few days that we were in the Smokies. The only places that dogs aren't allowed to go to on the Appalachian Trail are the Smokies and then Baxter State Park in Maine. So you really don't have to worry about it too much. Everywhere else is super dog friendly. How do you handle winter seasons with your dog? We started in March, so it definitely was winter season for trail. Um, there were some times that we got snowed in, we got hail, um, and it was really intense at times, but honestly, you just gotta keep moving. That was another reason why we shared a quilt to keep body heat together and there was never a time that i thought it was miserable if there was part of the benefits of hiking the appalachian trail is that you can get off trail at any time so if the weather was super stormy and cold i knew it was like hey she hates thunderstorms so i'm gonna get off trail um are there ticks there were so many ticks i have like nightmares for how many ticks there were my general rule was during the day, I would maybe check Rue once or twice a day to for ticks, but I always checked her right before we got into bed, before she got into my tent, because that's where you can get bit, and I don't want Lyme's disease. I checked Rue for ticks every single day, and especially before we went to bed. So make sure you check your dog for ticks. They are most prone to it because they're getting into stuff that you're not gonna necessarily get into. Did you do any special vaccines? Nothing special. I made sure that she got a new tick and flea collar and other than that I got everything normal. I had in case she got sick I had some like medicine if her stomach was wasn't okay but other than that everything normal. What would I do the same if I were to hike the Appalachian Trail with Rue? Rue made it halfway on the Appalachian Trail and that is something that I am just so freaking proud of. And if I were to do it again I would have said goodbye to her at the same exact place. Knowing the northern half of the AT, I just cannot imagine if she had been there with me. There were so many times I was nervous for myself. I can't even imagine if she had been there with me um, just because it's a lot more steep up there. The climbs are often you're on your hands and you're on your knees and it's just really stressful and really intense. Um, and if she had been there, I would have been, I'm definitely a paranoid mom. And even though I know she has the athletic ability, um, we would have gone a lot slower. There's just so many things that would have been different. I definitely made the right choice saying goodbye to her then. The Mahusik Notch, it's technically the hardest mile on the AT. I didn't think it was necessarily the hardest mile. If my dog had been with me, it definitely would have been the hardest mile because it was bouldering. There were so many times that my foot was right next to my hand and I was literally balancing just to get myself off there. I don't know what I would have done if Rue had been with me. If I'd do it again, I just, I would have said bye to her in the halfway, even though I missed her like hell, still would have done that the same exact way. What would you do differently if you hiked the AT with your dog? I wish I didn't care so much about what other people thought. So many people came up to me saying that I abused my dog because she was hiking this trail and she didn't have a choice. And it really got to me, it started wearing me down, and a lot of it is because trail does wear you down a little bit, but if I had to do it again, I just wouldn't have cared. I know my dog so well, I know her so well, and she loves hiking and she loves being outside. Even just recently, we watched her explore this new terrain and she was just in heaven. She loves exploring, she loves seeing new things, she loves smelling, um, and I know that, but when I was hiking, I'd let other people tell me that this was bad for my dog, and in retrospect, I know it wasn't. So if I had to do it again, I wouldn't have cared so much. Thank you so much for watching this first video. I hope that this has been informational. There's gonna be more to come. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel if you like the information, and if you guys have any questions about stuff that you wanna know or wanna learn about, please leave a comment. I totally want to answer some of the questions. I know there's a lot of information out there, um, but sometimes people don't really tell the truth about hiking. Um, we like to glamorize it, but it's hard sometimes and you want the real answers. Comment below. I would love to get some feedback and that's all I got for now. So thanks for watching and we'll talk soon. Rue, do you want to say bye? Rue says bye. <laughs>